The Canadian town of Port Hope once provided uranium for the Manhattan Project, the effort that created the atomic bombs that hit Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945. But the town's refinery left it with low-level radioactive waste. Now, Canadian authorities are surveying it to see if a clean-up is necessary. The federal government launched the survey this summer. Officials are checking 4,800 houses and buildings in response to concerns of local residents. Nuclear waste from the refinery was mixed with soil and used to build the foundations of homes. The Canadian government later conducted a clean-up of the contaminated soil, but it suspended work in the 1980s after the disposal site became full. Authorities say low-level radioactive materials with readings over the safety guidelines may remain in homes. The survey will take five years and officials say if they find radioactive materials over the permissible level, they'll dig up the waste and transport it to a new disposal site. They're planning to complete the site by 2015. The United States has conducted a subcritical nuclear test for the first time in almost two years. Officials with the National Nuclear Security Administration said scientists carried out the test at a site in the state of Nevada. The scientists wanted to examine how plutonium reacts to forces produced by chemical high explosives. But their experiment did not produce a nuclear chain reaction explosion. Government leaders declared in 1992 that they would suspend tests that include nuclear explosions. But they permitted such subcritical tests which are allowed under the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty. U.S. President Barack Obama has said he'll pursue a nuclear-free world, but American scientists have conducted several subcritical tests during his presidency. And people in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the cities that experienced the atomic bombings in 1945, criticized the tests. I wonder why President Obama decided to conduct the test. He should take to heart the feelings of the residents of Hiroshima. I feel sad that Americans still don't understand how we survivors feel. We are not submitting protest letters for no reason. U.S. scientists have carried out 27 subcritical tests. They say the experiments are necessary to maintain the safety and effectiveness of nuclear weapons. Japan's new administration under Prime Minister Shinzo Abe is working on transforming its energy policies. The trade minister says the country will continue exporting nuclear infrastructure after ensuring that it's safe. Japan has accumulated technology and human resources related to nuclear power. We would like the chance to put these to peaceful use. Meeting partners' requests and ensuring safety will be the major premises of this effort. And we also want to keep exporting our nuclear power infrastructure. Japan has been promoting exports of nuclear power generation facilities even after the nuclear accident in Fukushima. The previous administration, led by the Democratic Party, has signed pacts with countries such as Vietnam and Jordan in 2011, enabling it to transport nuclear technology. Motegi's comments suggest the new government is willing to follow the previous government's policy. Russia will help China build two nuclear reactors at a power plant in China. This is part of a plan to expand energy cooperation between the two nations. The agreement was signed by Russian Prime Minister Dmitry Medvedev and Chinese Premier Wen Jiabao when they met in Moscow. The two leaders also agreed to expand bilateral cooperation on nuclear energy usage. Russia's state nuclear energy corporation Rosatom says the construction of two new reactors will begin later this month at a Chinese nuclear power plant in Jiangsu province. Medvedev said the two nations will soon sign another agreement to boost energy cooperation, not only on nuclear energy, but also on oil and natural gas. Russia has been active to export nuclear power technology and facilities to emerging economies. That's despite the nuclear accident in Japan last year. The Russian government will help Bangladesh build its first nuclear power plant. Russian President Vladimir Putin said his country will offer money and manpower for the project. Putin announced the agreement in Moscow after meeting Bangladesh's Prime Minister Sheikh Hashina. Moscow will finance the deal with a loan of $500 million. A Russian state-owned company will build the plant about 200 kilometers from the capital, Dhaka. 
The plant will house two nuclear reactors, each one capable of producing one million kilowatts of electricity. Construction is to bring, begin early next year with completion slated for 2020. Russia's export of nuclear power technology and facilities has continued under undeterred by the 2011 nuclear accident in Japan. It's targeting markets in the emerging Asian economies of China, India and Vietnam.